Hello everybody, how is it by doing today? Or this evening whenever you're watching this. My name is Anthony Phillips, and I am a messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And today I'm going to be talking about the second coming of Christ. Today is Monday, May the 27th, 2024 at approximately 8.15 p.m. And today, I'm going to talk about the second coming of Christ. This is the third part of my end time series. Please check out my other videos on my channel about the rapture and the tribulation. So this is part three of my end time series. So what is the second coming of Christ? Well, the second coming of Christ is when Christ returns to the earth to defeat the Antichrist and establish his millennium reign. Christ will come back on the white horse along with the armies of heaven on white horses. And you can find that information out in Revelation chapter 19 verses 11 through 16. The first time that Christ came, he came as a suffering servant, as found in Isaiah chapter 53. The next time he comes, he'll be the conquering king. The second coming of Christ will be visible to the whole entire world. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they which also pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. And that's found in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, if you want to check that out. The second coming of Christ and the rapture are not the same. They are similar but they are two separate events. What's the difference, you may ask? The rapture is when Christ comes to remove all believers from the earth to deliver them from the wrath of God, which is the great tribulation. And you can find that out in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 54. Believers who have died will be resurrected and given new bodies and will, along with the believers who are alive on the earth, will meet Christ in the air. Christ will not set foot on the earth at the time of the rapture. He will be up in the air, up in the sky. And that's where we will meet him in the clouds. As I already mentioned, the second coming of Christ is when Christ comes back to the earth to defeat the Antichrist, destroy evil, and establish the millennium reign. The important differences between the rapture and the second coming are as follows. At the rapture, believers will meet the Lord in the air. At the second coming, believers will come back to the earth with Christ to reign with him for a thousand years. The rapture will be instant, and it will be secret. Well, I believe it, I believe everybody will see the rapture, unless if it happens at midnight. Um, if the rapture happens at midnight where everybody is sleeping, then only those who are awake we see the rapture. Um, but I do believe, I personally believe, that the rapture will be visible for people to see. Because, I mean, it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. So, uh, but it will be instant and can happen at any given time. There doesn't need to be anything happening before the rapture happens. The second coming, on the other hand, will be visible to everyone. 
and you can read Revelations 1 7 and Matthew 24 to 29 to 30 for that information. Um, according to the Bible, there are many things that must take place before the second coming of Christ. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 to 30 has the list of things that must happen before the second coming of Christ. Persecution will be widely spread throughout the world, worse than any persecution known to mankind. Wars and rumors of wars, the sun being blackened, the moon losing its light, the stars falling from heaven, earthquakes in various places, and many more events that must take place before the second coming of Christ. Now some of these events have already taken place and have happened in times past. And some are currently happening right now. You can read Matthew chapter 24 for more information on these events. But Matthew 24 verse 29 to 30 says this. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give for light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the man, Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, most will read that and say that it's about the second coming of Christ. That's what I believe. Some would say that it's the rapture. Um, in verse 31, it talks about how the Lord will send his angels to gather the elect from all the corners of the earth. So that does sound like the rapture of scripture. But I do not know if it's really talking about the rapture or the second coming of Christ. I believe it could be talking about the second coming of Christ because everyone will see Christ in the air. But then again, it could be talking about the rapture. So you can look at it at both ways. So I'm not going to say it's one or the other. It could be for both. Um, if you want to read that information, that is found in Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 to 30. So those are the differences between the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Now there has been Christians who have lost their faith in the return of Christ because they have said, people have been saying that for years, but the truth is, God is not slack of his promise of return as people as some people count slackness. But he is being patient with everyone, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everyone to be saved, but the reality is not everyone is going to be saved. But God will reveal himself to everyone. The truth will be heard by every human being on the earth. That way, no one will have an excuse on Judgment Day. It is very important to come to Christ today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised. Our lives are nothing but a vapor. Here one moment and gone the next. Come to Jesus today. Pour out your heart to him. He will not turn you away. For he says he will not turn anyone away who calls upon his name. Just say, Lord, I don't know what to do. Please help me. I believe you died and rose again, and I repent of my sins. Come into my life and help me to be the person you want me to be. It's that simple. You guys believe in your heart. Believe by faith. 
Call unto the Lord by faith, and he will heal you. God loves you, and he proved that love through the death of his son Jesus on the cross. And because Jesus lives, you and I can live as well. Will you answer the Lord's calling? He is standing at the door of your heart, and he's knocking. If you hear his voice, and open up and invite him in. He will come in and dine with you. He will give you a new heart and a new spirit. Come to him with an open heart and he will receive you. He is waiting for you. Will you go to him? It doesn't matter what you have done or what your past looks like. God can give you a whole new life. Trust me, I know it's true, because it happened to me. Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who are heavy burdened and weary, and I will give you rest. Cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. He loves you with an everlasting love. I pray that you receive Christ in your heart. Maybe you're someone who used to be a believer, but you have strayed away. But I'm here to tell you that God has not left you, even if you've left him. He's waiting for you to come back. Just as the prodigal son's father welcomed him back with open arms, you are welcomed in by the Heavenly Father with open arms. So I just want to encourage you with this word. Jesus Christ is coming back. And we must be ready. So I want to say I love you and God loves you. God bless. Goodbye.